Hello everyone, I am Ahmed Subashi, Business Development Director of SESTEC. Let me give you a brief introduction for my speakers today. Professor Levant Arstan is the founder and CEO of SESTEC, and we have Mr. Mustafa Erdan, Head of AI Research, joining us today. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, brief intro to SESTEC. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So, brief intro to SESTEC. We are a conversational automation company developing AI powered solutions for customer service over 20 years. We have two R&D centers with more than 100 engineers, and we work on speech recognition, NLU, and AI technologies. And about today's webinar, we are going to talk about this LLM rush and discuss in details the benefits, the disadvantages, and how to invest in this technology that has been stealing the headlines for some time now. And as we all know, in recent years, developments in this technology resulted in systems with unprecedented capabilities especially for companies interacting with customers. Uh, regardless of type, AI trained in these large language models can generate new content and handle various tasks for the customers. Having said that, we are seeing a bit of a confusion among our in enterprise customers like banks, insurance companies, telecom companies on how exactly to benefit from this technology. Questions like, are we missing out on this hype train? Should we go all in investing in the stack? Or is it safe to trust this technology with my customers or with my brand image? Worry no more. We are here to answer all of these questions today. So let's jump right in. So Professor Levant, how do LLMs work? Can you explain this in simple terms? And as a follow-up question, there have been many LLMs recently released. What makes each of them different? Uh, large language models, they work by analyzing very large amounts of text data uh, to learn language patterns and structures. Uh, they use deep learning techniques, particularly transformer architectures, to generate text based on the input they receive. The differences among different LLMs may originate from data sets used in different stages of training. Uh, also, in addition to that, model architectures and training objectives affect the size, performance, and capabilities of these models. Mostly, LLMs are designed for general use. However, there are LLMs fine-tuned for specific domains, such as medical or legal as well. Also, different models are trained for supporting different set of languages. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, just as a follow-up question, we hear the term foundation models frequently. What exactly is that and what is the difference between LLMs and foundation models? Uh, a foundation model refers to any model that's trained on extensive data sets, typically through large-scale SAS provision. It can be customized or refined to handle a variety of specific applications. But LLM is more specific. It's typically used when discussing models focusing on language tasks. The term foundation model carries a broader implication across different modalities, such as text, images, videos, etc. Okay. Therefore, they are more capable of supporting a wide range of applications in addition to just language tasks. Amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, now this question is to Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa, here at SESTEC, we have been working on these AI-powered tools for over 20 years now. So can you please give us some use cases from our industry where LLMs made a real difference? Uh, sure. Before LLMs, traditionally, transformer models were utilized to generally achieve a single task where the model was fine-tuned with many labeled examples. With LLMs, uh, it's shown that fewer examples are sufficient for fine-tuning models. Uh, even in many cases, uh, no training is necessary. You can just give the LLM instructions for a totally new task. Uh, one of the most important use cases is retrieval augmented generation, REG, where user queries are answered by LLMs based on knowledge bases. Uh, this application uh, is useful in 
many scenarios for automated customer support systems. Another use case is extracting information from dialogues. Uh, we can just basically get summaries of the dialogues or we can extract intents from them. And these intents can be used to analyze which topics are handled frequently. Also, using these intents, we can check if same customers are calling the call center for same reasons repeatedly. Uh, LLMs can also be utilized in designing NLP applications. For example, during the design of an intent schema, uh, LLM can generate intents and utterances belonging to a specific domain. This was not possible before LLMs. Yes, I think this is one of the very exciting things about LLMs. I, we started using LLMs to enhance our machine learning models, to simplify our uh, flow designs and uh, a lot of other useful functionality. And I think this trend will uh, keep on progressing. Um, OK, these all sound uh, like very exciting benefits that can affect how businesses can serve customers. But now let's talk about the other side of the coin. How accurate are these technologies, um, for example, in terms of updates? Um, since LLMs use huge amount of data, it takes a very long time to train these models, uh, maybe on the order of months. Uh, and this is one of the important pitfalls of LLMs because you want these models to be up to date as a customer. Uh, for example, you would like to hear current news about tension in Middle East or upcoming election in the US. Uh, you don't want to hear news from three months ago, for example. Uh, but we are seeing developments in this area by vendors, uh, which is good news. And they are doing research to speed up that process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So uh, let me uh, ask another important and trending uh, question. It is the hallucination. So uh, what exactly is hallucination of AI, uh, Mustafa or Levantoji, whoever would like to take that question? Uh, yes. LLM hallucination refers to instances where LLMs generate information that is incorrect, fabricated or not based on accurate data. This phenomenon occurs because LLMs, despite their advanced capabilities, do not truly understand the context like humans do. They uh, try to predict the next word uh, as much as it can based on patterns uh, learned from huge amounts of data. Therefore, uh, sometimes LLMs can produce plausible sounding content, but it can be totally wrong. This happens especially when dealing with questions uh, for ambiguous cases or uh, that are not seen in their training data. Hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, we are already also hearing about LLM failures in which the company's virtual agent praises competitors or gives a wrong price code. Uh, these are very sensitive issues and uh, unacceptable uh, customer interactions for businesses. Why do they happen? Mustafa. Uh, such failures in LLMs typically stem from inadequate training or poor contextual understanding or insufficiently defined constraints. LLMs have some risks. One of them is prompt injection. When an LLM application is deployed, there is a carefully crafted system prompt that determines the limitations of the application. Uh, for most cases, this uh, is sufficient. Uh, however, when someone tries to trick the chatbot to achieve a malicious intent, they also craft special queries. And these special questions can sometimes force the LLM to make mistakes by changing their instructions or stretching the constraints. Thank you, Mustafa. Hocam, would you like to say anything about these subjects? Um, yes, I mean, when we talk about enterprise-grade solutions, we are talking about near-zero error rates. Uh, global brands are not in a position to take any chances when it comes to corporate image and regulatory issues or GDPR. So this is a very important point here. Uh, for example, Carrefour 
is one of our oldest customers and we developed a virtual agent for them. They have stores in different regions around the world. It was a very sensitive issue when their customers ask about halal food uh, from an EU country or from a Muslim country. Uh, there is a similar issue for kosher food in Israel, for example. Uh, we had to overwrite the answer from the LLM by our orchestration tool. Uh, little, but those important details are very critical when companies are addressing customers. I totally agree, Ojam. Uh, Mustafa, would you like to comment on the same subject? Uh, yes, another example can be when a customer asks about a mortgage loan and GPT can make errors when presenting basic math calculations. LLMs have difficulty for some tasks. Uh, math is one of them. Uh, for the benchmark of college level mathematics problems, the performance of LLMs are below 60%. Mm -hmm. Even for grade school math problems, the error rates are more than 7%. Yeah, I would assume that like new LLM versions are trying to overcome these problems and they'll get better by time. But for the time being, what is our answer? How can companies avoid these pitfalls? Uh, precautions can be taken to reduce risks. For example, the system can be made robust to prompt injection by carefully designing the system prompt and separating user input from the instructions by delimiters. Uh, to avoid calculation errors, we can use specific tools instead of LLMs in scenario flows. Uh, and to reduce the possibility of GPT providing disturbing or biased content, they are fine-tuned for human preferences to generate responses that are helpful and ethical. Uh, also, we should apply content moderation to all inputs and outputs of a generative AI system. Uh, these precautions can be taken. Amazing, amazing. So, uh, continuous monitoring, um, adjusting filters, customizations, content moderation, all of these seems yeah. to be very key aspects of the problem. So, uh, Professor, I'd like to ask you one more question. So, let's talk about uh, implementation now. How do we make LLMs relevant to enterprises? What are the steps to follow when investing in LLMs? Um, to make use of large language models for enterprises, we should follow uh, five steps mainly. Uh, the first step is to identify specific use cases for the organization. That is, determine specific business processes or tasks where LLMs can add value, such as customer service automation, content generation, or data analysis. Uh, the second step is custom training. Uh, we should train the LLM on domain-specific data or corporate documentation either from the web page or specific PDF documents, let's say, uh, to tailor its understanding and responses to the enterprise's specific needs and terminology. And the third step is integration. We should integrate the LLM into existing business systems and workflows using APIs or custom interfaces to enhance or automate decision-making process. Fourth step is compliance and privacy. Uh, we should ensure that the model complies with industry regulations and data privacy standards. We can use techniques like federated learning or differential privacy for that. And final step is continuous evaluation and feedback. Mm. Uh, we should regularly analyze the LLM's performance and accuracy. We should fine tune the system responses and capabilities based on user requests uh, from the live system. Following these steps, enterprises can customize and leverage LLMs to improve efficiency, enhance customer experience, and also drive innovation. Excellent, Ojam. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. I think we have covered very important points today about LLMs, the benefits, pitfalls, and how to avoid them. I just want to end today's discussion with key takeaways. Can you each share one important takeaway for our audience that are already invested in LLMs 
or in the process of starting uh, their investments? Mustafa, you can start. Uh, generative AI is a very powerful tool, and we believe it has the power to change the future. But it is not one cure for all. It is not okay. a turnkey solution for every problem. So when investing in this technology, run slow. You still need to do your homework. Uh, you need to provide clean data, clean flows, and constant monitoring to AI so that you are in control when it comes to engaging with customers. Great response. Thank you very much, Mustafa. Hocam, uh, Professor, would you like to make uh, your final remarks on the subject? OK. Um, my advice will be going hybrid for enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, your corporate image is essential. You must manage the customer dialogue with a context focus, basically. So what we do here at Sestec is we offer automation and provide full benefit of LLM for general daily conversations and customers enjoy the vast capacity of LLMs. But when it comes to more complex transactions, we make we take matters into our own hands and give answers with rule based algorithms so enterprises can have full control over what's presented to the customer. So hybrid solutions can provide this control. Amazing, amazing. And actually from my side, I cannot highlight enough the importance of delivery and professional services and the expertise uh, as you've been uh, displaying in this conversation. Because things on paper might be very different from real life on the ground, especially when you're dealing with new and constantly evolving technology. So I suggest uh, the audience to work with vendors like Sestec, which has a perfect delivery record, and also provide professional services after delivery for the best outcome of your investments. So uh, this is the end of our webinar. And thank, uh, thank you to our speakers once again. And we will see you next time. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Mustafa.